find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hello, everyone, to Indie Mayhem Show episode 80. Hi, this is an unfamiliar voice if you are a regular listener to this show, but hi, how's it going? Uh, I am Eamon Payton, uh, down here in Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, the voice, uh, as many say, of uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling down here, the uh, color commentator. Joining me, uh, and I get to introduce him this time, uh, he is uh, the head of a, a little place called Silvertron Media, where he uh, uh, produces events for uh, group uh, DVDs and and video on demand for groups such as uh, the International Wrestling Cartel and the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Uh, Sorgatron, Mike Sorg, how are you doing? Hello, Eamon. Thank you for doing the intro. I'm a little flummoxed because I'm uh, on my way back from Virgil Town, uh, as in the uh, Legend of Virgil and his, uh, his traveling merchandise table that is releasing here uh, within the next 24 hours. So I figure, let's let you take on the duties. Let's you take you take on the uh, heavy work, heavy lifting this week. And uh, I'm still kind of in recovery mode from finishing this project and getting it out the door. So uh, so no, good to, good to be talking with you again, Eamon. It's great to be talking with you, Zork. Uh, so for those that are listening here, hi, how are you? Uh, thanks for listening to the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, if you're you're definitely either listening to us or watching us on various amount of platforms, you can check us out on iTunes, YouTube. Uh, uh, what are the other places? <laughs> I don't think is Stitcher still all a thing the places. Anymore? Just go to wrestlingmayhemshow.com. It's got all the links and uh, of thingamabobs that you can click on, so you can never miss an episode of the Indie Mayhem show or other great products at Wrestling Mayhem Show. I also want to send a best, uh, special thanks as well to our friend Basic Sickness, who did the intro music for this show. Uh, uh, much love to him as well. I remember that part of the intro <laughs> for this show. Uh, you can also uh, email us at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or on our hotline 412-206-WMS0 uh, to uh, tell us uh, if there's you know anything you think we should be talking about on the show, uh, any questions you have for any of us. Uh, feel free to contact us on there. And uh, and go check us out on on there. Uh, you can also follow us on Pro Rest or find us on ProWrestlingTees dot com for a myriad of uh, Pro Wrestling T shirts that you can buy and support us uh, and support us monetarily because that helps us a lot. Uh, and and uh, if you want shows like this happening, that's a great way to do it. Um, so yeah, I think it's time for to now. Now I'm confused because now I got to introduce myself. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, you don't. I, you already did that part. They say now we're going to talk to our wonderful guest this week. Who I, I, you're the one that knows that part. Yeah, because there's usually the part where Sorg says, "So, hey, man, who's I who love this so much. I love that. I love that you're completely falling apart at this. No, you have a wonderful guest. Please let us know who she is and uh, and and let's let's learn about her. I do have a wonderful guest this week. Uh, uh, this person, uh, in the uh, in the starts of her uh, professional wrestling career, uh, training down in Austin, Texas, for uh, America's Academy of Pro Wrestling, and is starting to uh, build her way up in the uh, in the Texas wrestling scene. It's a pleasure to have her on this week, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, Lainey Luck. Lainey, how are you this evening? Hi guys, I'm good. Thanks for having me on the show. Definitely. Uh, a big pleasure to have you on. Uh, sort of a, uh, a question we kind of start off with uh, uh, generally as almost an icebreaker in a sense because we all, you know, get into wrestling one way or the other. Uh, what's your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? Um, well, I remember watching it when I was little, like with my dad and whatnot. But the first, like, when it was like my choice to watch wrestling was actually only just a few years ago when I saw my first indie show here at ACW in Austin, I saw Barbie Hayden and Athena wrestle. And that's actually what made me want to start wrestling. Awesome. Cool. And then, uh, obviously I think most people we have on the show kind of, you know, like they, like you kind of mentioned, like they got into it from like the old school stuff, but it's cool to see somebody that kind of got into it because of indie wrestling. Uh, uh, what was about it? What was about the whole, experience that kind of got you hooked on that well i mean like i was kind of like wrestling but i wasn't like crazy about it um but just seeing like that they like women they were doing 
all this crazy stuff. They had these crazy matches that the guys wear, and I'd never seen that, like, when I was younger, because women didn't do that back then. And so it was just seeing that they could hang with the guys. They could do, they could put on just as good of a show, and just, like, that whole environment, like, interacting, like, the way that they drew the crowd, I was like, wow, I would love to do that. Awesome, cool. And then, uh, obviously, you eventually made the transition into training to become a pro wrestler. Uh, uh, what was it like sort of uh, starting out? Because uh, I believe you started with the uh, America's Academy of Pro Wrestling uh, in Austin. Uh, uh, what kind of, what what was the big motivating cause to say, you know, I'm finally going to do this? Um, honestly, it was just, like, I couldn't not do it anymore. Like, I, after I started watching local shows here, I started actually getting into WWE and everything. And just like watching it all like all day every day, I was like, "All right, I just have to do it. I have to go at least check it out." Because I had no idea that there was a school here in Austin. And once I found that out, I was like, "All right, it's here. Like it's possible. I have to go start right now." Cool. And and uh, when you actually did get to start training, uh, was there anything that kind of sort of surprised you about about the the process that it goes that goes into training to become a pro wrestler? Um. I don't know that I was ever too surprised or anything because I never, like, watching I never thought, oh, this is going to be easy. Like, there's going to be no problem. I can do this. But I guess more the thing I was most surprised about was how much, how mental it is. It's, like, physical is, like, the least, like, big part of it. It's, like, so much mentally than physically. Cool. And did you have any sort of, I guess, uh, like, like, athletic background going into becoming a pro wrestler or were you kind of just sort of starting out fresh when it comes to sort of a, uh, no, uh, I was sort pretty, of a, I mean, a sport like it. Yeah, I was pretty athletic, like all through high school and everything. And before I actually started training, I had gotten a gym membership and been hitting the gym a lot just to be prepared. Cause I knew like that I was going to do it. So I thought, since I can't start the school yet, I might as well hit the gym. So I was pretty well prepared. physically. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, so into your actual training, what, what would you say would be like a, a day in the life or, or a week in the life of a, uh, a training professional wrestler? What, specifically even at, at AAPW, what's the, what's the schedule kind of like, how does your, your, your week kind of go out, I guess you could say when it comes to your training and stuff like that? We have training Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and it's usually from seven to 11, and the first half of the class is like your beginning basic stuff, your fundamental, because we keep getting new people, so we got to get them through that. But you, like, as a senior, you continue to take it because you can never have too much basics. There's no such thing. And then usually the later half of the class, because George teaches the fundamentals, and then Ray steps in for the last half of the class, and that's when we usually kind of go over like psychology and like actual moves like we can ask him like certain things that we want to learn and more um advanced stuff like that awesome cool and i know the uh the school also does like weekly events i believe uh where you get oh, to no, we just do like monthly shows or monthly oh, okay sorry about that uh but yeah i'm but i know you're also kind of going out and wrestling some other places nowadays um uh, what's it like to kind of get booked on shows and sort of traveling the roads, I guess you could say of, 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 of the indie wrestling world. Um, it's the funnest thing. Like the shows are, the shows are what we do this for. Like it's, uh, that's the fun part. The training is the hard work. The shows are all the fun part, but we actually just, a couple of us had our first like actual like wrestling traveling weekend. And cause we were booked for Friday and Saturday down in, um, San Antonio and so we stayed the night over there and stuff and it was a really cool experience it was like like meeting all these like people that you used to watch like you used to just be a fan and now you're like meeting with them and working with them and talking with them it's really crazy awesome uh, are there any people that I guess kind of stand out in, in the Texas wrestling scene or, or even bigger than that that kind of have influence you along your your uh, run so far in professional wrestling um definitely barbie like i said before she's the reason i started and athena definitely because she just kicks ass all the time and um 
Steve, Steve Lorino, he's actually my favorite, like, Texas wrestler. He's, in my eyes, just the perfect wrestler. Awesome, yeah. And we've had Steve on uh, uh, once before. Definitely, uh, I would highly agree with that statement. Very, very talented uh, individual. Um, what would you say, I guess, in a sense, obviously you're, you're kind of just starting out in, in wrestling, but do you have any sort of goals when it comes to your future, maybe even just like a year down the line, a couple years, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, your career in professional wrestling? I guess, like, picturing like a year down the road, I'm hoping... I'm working for bigger companies, like maybe like the NWA and stuff like that. Maybe Shimmer, hopefully. That would be really cool. Those are probably my short-term goals. But obviously, long-term goals are even bigger companies. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, 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 I mean, obviously, WWE is a big goal for many. I, and, and I would assume yeah. that's kind of another thing uh, for, for anyone aspiring to be a pro wrestler. Um, yeah, Definitely. Awesome. So uh, uh, another uh, regular question we tend to ask on this show uh, is, uh, what are you watching currently for um, wrestling wise uh, when it comes to the, you know, studying purposes or either just recreation? Is there anything you kind of have your uh, eye on currently? Um, I definitely watch a lot of New Japan just because that's the style that I really like, like strong style. That's what I hope to kind of incorporate into my own. And then I watch the usual WWE stuff, and then a lot of uh, local indie shows, too. Very cool. Awesome. Uh, and, and to close things out, uh, uh, the regular question we have on the show, and, and many of our guests tend to take it in a lot of different ways, so feel free. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the question we have is, uh, what is, in your opinion, the best and the worst thing about independent wrestling? Oh, man, I don't even... I don't know that I've really experienced like a worse thing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, know you, I mean, I mean, for someone just starting out, I mean, obviously, but, um, I mean, I guess it's just the usual whole women can't wrestle BS that you run into a lot. That's, I mean, that's not really indie. It's like all of wrestling, but mm-hmm. that's probably like the only like downside that I've experienced so far. And the best thing is definitely, um, getting to travel and like meeting people. Like I met, I met so many people already and I've just started. Awesome. Very cool. Definitely. Um, well, well, thank you very much, Lainey, for joining us here on the, uh, on the Indie Mayhem show. Um, uh, if you have any upcoming events you're going to be appearing on, or, um, if people can follow you on social media, uh, feel free to, uh, plug away and let everyone know. Yeah, for sure. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's all Lainey Luck same name and i post all the time about my shows and everything i can't remember at this exact moment uh <laughs> what my next shows are but i definitely post about them all the time let you guys know what's up awesome very cool uh thank you thank you very much again for joining us on the show and chachi plays for kids is coming back again the 24-hour game for youth arts programs in pittsburgh August 7th and 8th at the Toonsium or join us live chachiplays.com find out how you can make a difference too and donate today chachiplays.com up down down left right left right BA BA start so Eamon I had a trip this past week as you may know from my Twitters (laughs) And we talked about I know from many different things. Yes. Right, right, right. And we talk about this. You know, I go to the Gathering of Juggalos. They have their Bloody Mania. Uh, no Kaiju Big Battle this year. That was actually three nights of wrestling. They had their Exotic Ladies of Wrestling, which is just some really good booked wrestling, actually, that people awkwardly yell, show your tits to, unfortunately, um, which I feel really bad. But but I did tweet uh, uh, our friend Elizabeth. Uh, uh, um, Ah, jeez. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Monroe. Mary Elizabeth Monroe. I knew I flipped something up there. It's late. I'm sorry. Uh, but <laughs> but she said she had a good time and everything. So and it was really good. Again, a great collection of wrestling. Um, uh, uh, or, or, you know, some other friends of the show, some, some girls I see around here, and really just good talent up and down uh, from that. Uh, the next night was the awesome. Oddity Brawl, and of course, Bloody Mania was their big event where they pulled out all the stops for there as far as their booking goes. Uh, Oddity Brawl was interesting because I didn't know what to expect from it, right? Because, uh, you know, there was no kaiju big battle what they do with this. Uh, the first match was Matt Classic taking on a bear. 
I heard about this. You heard about this. <laughs> uh, Promo from you, but I, I, I was, I'm very interested in this because there is some bear related activity. That's that's right. It's not the only one soon. happening here, but uh, no, no, he came out and it was a be- guy in a bear suit. And uh, at a certain point, of course, Matt Emma Classic, if you're not familiar, he seems in structure very similar to uh, uh, somebody named Cole Cabana. Uh, but uh, at a certain point, the bear's head got ripped off. And I think the joke was uh, that he was a gay bear underneath it that uh, kind of hulked up and uh, and just destroyed Matt Classic. Uh, so that was entertaining. Mm-hmm. The other uh, entertaining uh, of, of the night was, uh, I forget what they called it exactly, but uh, they had their kind of uh, two marijuana characters uh, come in, Isaiah and the Weed Man, who happens to be the champion right now. And uh, the challenge was that they had to stop every 60 seconds and, and smoke up mid-wrestling match. There were giant bags of tortillas involved. There were Legos involved. I don't even know why the Legos got in there. I missed that somehow. Uh, but they looked like they hurt more than anything else they had over the weekend. Uh, it's, again, it was just gimmick match after gimmick match. Zach Gowan took on uh, uh, three guys uh, that were the Viking party uh, in a handicap match. Ha uh-huh. ha! But they also introduced Gregory Iron to the show, too as the uh, outside enforcer, basically, and talked about, you know, and then they mentioned, like, you know, what his thing, his issue was with the cerebral palsy and everything. And, uh, and, and of course, he comes in and helps Zach, and uh, it, was, uh, it was pretty good. Uh, the Juggalos were definitely down with him. Uh, they had a glass for that ass match was the main event. Light tubes, those glass panes in the corner, um, all kinds of crazy stuff, you know. Uh, it's like, to the point where you're hitting the mat and all the glass is just jumping and, 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 and that sound is going off, right? Uh, there was a barbed wire uh, match of some sort. There's a uh, bloody brawl where you have to be bleeding to be thrown over the top. Um, and that was the oddity night. It was, some pretty, it, was, it was some fun stuff. And we were just talking about the hardcore stuff on Wrestling Mayhem Show. And it was just like, it was just enough, right? It used to be this was every match, it seemed, over the weekend. Um, but they really kind of uh, pared it down lately. Um, the, uh, Bloody Mania itself was a lot of fun. Uh, and this is, again, the night they had really good wrestling. For the first time ever, Matt Cross and MVP, tremendous match. I know Matt Cross was sharing his, his, uh, uh, comment from MVP that it was, uh, you know, it was, it was a great match and it was great to work with a professional, you know, so... Uh, and it really came off very, very well. Uh, Tracy Smothers showed up just in time for the flag, bur- flag burning match with Rude Boy, and uh, they did they burnt the flag right on the the uh, ring post, uh, which I thought was just going to catch the entire damn thing on fire. Uh, they went into the crowd in almost two campsites. Uh, I, I I'll, I'll throw up some pictures here while we're talking. I don't know if you've seen these, Eamon. but the the setup was uh, it was like they found this crevice hole a little bit. Uh, down in, 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 in it seems it was like surrounded by campsites and everything like at the top of the hills. But it was really nice because you just sit on the hill and you could see everything. Like you didn't have to go down to it. We all had camping chairs in my section up there, and we just got to sit back and uh, for the show that starts at one in the morning. And a lot of us are really kind of already exhausted from already exhausted from uh, you know all the shows that night and everything. Uh, so it's it's really nice to kind of see. You know, to, to, to just kind of hang out and, and, and do that. Uh, and also, it was a lot better located than last year because we had to go down this giant hill to look for uh, the wrestling ring. And, and I think a lot of people just kind of didn't bother last year, right? Uh, but no, it was it was really good. Uh, uh, we had a tag team match. The Hoodlums were there again as well. Uh, and I'm starting to fade on exactly what happened on some of these things. Uh, main event, Matt Hardy took on their local guys, Weed, Weed Man and... Um, 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 too tough Tony, who usually does a lot of hardcore stuff, really. And here's a shot mm. from uh, one of the hardcore matches. I think this is the this is the glass match. Actually, you see a light tube going up there and taking that guy out, for instance. Um, but uh, one guy's name was Mosh Pit Mike. I think that was he was in the Battle Royal. Um, but again, really good show. I, I and I've been kind of saying like, hey, so such and such come with us. I'm trying to get like non jugglers to kind of come check this out. And I think for the wrestling, you know, wheels. I think you would be into this kind of thing. Uh, I think Will would be into Bobby F J Town. I, I think you guys would really enjoy coming out, even just to see the wrestling and just see the spectacle of the entire weekend would be a lot of fun. 
uh, for all you guys. And I definitely recommend it. It's definitely something a little different. Again, you know, it's kind of got that flavor. But even like this year, it didn't have a lot of that. Like, if you weren't a juggalo, you wouldn't understand what's happening out there. Like, there was less inside jokes and just a lot of wrestling or hardcore or just fun stuff, right? Uh, and, and I think that really showed because I think that kind of keeps anybody from getting into this kind of thing. Um, and, and it's definitely a passion thing for the insane clown posse that puts this entire thing on. They're very much like, you know, no matter what happens every year at the gathering, we will have JCW. We will have wrestling. I don't think they make any money off of this. Uh, but you know, I mean, they do a little bit, but it's, it's very much like that's, you know, they grew up wrestling fans and everything, and they're just completely down with it. And uh, they even showed up uh, without face paint even, and just to announce one of the matches. Um, and that is a Chris Benoit standee in the front, by the way, that they were holding up all night. So, uh, which there was a great, there was a great uh, uh, moment where uh, uh, Violent Jay's looking at the, you know, like right here. Actually, this is probably the point where he, where he was talking to the standee. And I can't tell you how high he probably was. Uh, but he's <laughs> like, oh, Chris Benoit, I was a fan of your work. By the way, fuck you. <laughs> so that was pretty pretty cool um but those don't know they actually did uh icp actually did a song about chris benoit so uh you can go check that it's not i think we covered it on this show at one i think point. we talked about it at one point it's not even even as far as an icp song goes it's not that great um but you know that they talk about killers you know and it's not really a supporting song it's just a, a lot of these are samples of bad shit Right. And uh, that's no 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 different example here. So uh, we have wheels on with us uh, for RWA. I did not attend. I'll be editing that this week uh, for DVD and digital download at PittsburghWrestling.com. I know uh, I, apparently the, the, the pictures I snagged from Katie are already in my Google photos because they popped up right in the middle of all this other stuff. Uh, but it looks like you guys got pretty freaking crazy there on Saturday night. Oh, just I mean, sort the way you and I had the discussion of. Starting a show with a TLC match and mm-hmm. ending it with a cage match was exactly the way I thought it would happen, and it was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was a great show from beginning to end, even in that hot building. You've been in there in a July atmosphere. There were 220 people in that gym, and it, it was amazing. And I mentioned it earlier on the Mayhem show. During the main event, the Fold versus Team RWA was just as crazy as you'd think it would be in a War Game style match. It even had a turn on, on Team RWA, Brian Edmonds, against the RWA fans. And it, Dr. Feelbad actually got on a mic and started freaking out and yelling. To everybody just get out of the cage. And he told them, I will give you to the count of five. He hit five. I hit music. And I went deaf. Not from the music. Because I am the music guy. So, of course, I'm not going to go deaf. The crowd went nuts for the return of the best in Pittsburgh, Ashton Amherst. Who was wielding a bat. And, as I said on... The Mayhem Show. It was so nuts. I saw a lady beside me had her child on her lap, and the baby flew up in the air. And okay, yes, the baby was caught, so nobody panic. <laughs> but it was just that much excitement. She squealed really loud, and the baby flew. Wrestlers later came to me and joked about it. He went, "Man, that pup was so crazy." Babies were flying. I think I caught one. <laughs> and I, I laughed my butt off. The show was just that amazing. And I highly recommend, if you missed it, please get it. If you, if you were even there, still get it. Because this show was amazing. And it was also announced that this coming show in August will be the last show of one of the members of Generation Dead, G-Raver, so the match set up for that is Generation Dead member Kitty Raver versus Gory. And I I can't wait to see that match. And if it's anything like that TLC match this past Saturday, 
we're in for a treat. And I highly recommend a DVD or the digital download. Get it, people. I, I loved it. I can't wait to watch it again. Awesome. So we're back to you, brother. It's going to be good stuff. I can't wait to edit that thing here this week. Hey, man, you got any news before we get out of here today? Uh, not, not any big news. Uh, uh, I can say, uh, well, I guess there is news from uh, the Inspire Pressing stuff. Uh, we did Battle Wars tickets went on sale for our big uh, joint Chicago Pro show mm-hmm. that's happening on uh, September 13th. Uh, so much fun last year. Glad we're bringing it back. Uh, and we also just announced today, well, the announcement came out that we'll be a part of Fun 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 Fest again this year, uh, November 6th through the 8th. Uh, that will be very fun, definitely. Uh, a very cool experience last year uh, being a part of that for the first time. And it'll be cool to ha- uh, to uh, uh, be back there. We're sharing a bill with uh, Wu-Tang Clan, which is kind of <laughs> weird. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, that and like Andrew WK. Um, nice. But yeah, it should, be, it should be interesting. It should be a fun uh, a fun weekend. So yeah, there's uh, definitely a lot of cool stuff going on uh, going on from there. Awesome. Go check all this stuff out. Thanks to our interview this week, of course. Uh, but check out rwalive.com, inspireprowrestling.com, and hey, uh, the juggalo wrestling.com, I think, is the other one for uh, the Gathering of Juggalos. There will be a lot of stuff. They actually have the DVD up from last year's Bloody Mania, which was a lot of fun as well. You can see uh, Boogeyman feeding worms to Juggalos. That happened. So go check all that stuff out. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing uh and uh check out everything at wrestling show.com support the show uh, t- buy a t-shirt become a patreon supporter whatever the case may be or just tell a friend share it if you really dug the interview this week or in previous weeks as well uh so until next time please support indie wrestling Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.